That is a warrant. No, it's not. It's a Department of Homeland Security order. It's a, it's a warrant. Okay. No, it's not a warrant. It's not a warrant under the Constitution of the United States. Warrant of arrest of alien. Yeah, warrant of arrest of alien. Alien not signed by a judge. It's not a judicial warrant. I have no obligation to oblige by that warrant. This is a lawful warrant Did signed by a judge of the Immigration and Nationality Act and an, uh, de an official designated with that authority. Are you hearing this, Mark? Yeah, I, I tell him I'm on my way. Our attorney's on his way. Okay. What's that going to... That's not a warrant. That is a warrant. No, it's not. It's a Department of Homeland Security order. It's a, it's a warrant. Okay. No, it's not a warrant. It's not a warrant under the Constitution of the United States. It's a warrant under the Immigration and Nationality Act of the United States. Okay, that's fine, but it's not under the Constitution. You have no jurisdiction over me as a citizen. I'm the driver of this vehicle. Okay, are you familiar with uh, Title Eight, Section 1324 of U.S. Code? Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. In what regard? I'm studying to be a Department of Justice accredited representative, so I've been through trainings. Okay. And I have copies of the, actually, in this box right here, I have a copy of a real warrant and a copy of that, just so people know not to listen to that. Okay, so you're, you're aware of the statutes governing, uh, transporting, and uh, harboring illegal aliens in the United States? I am. Okay. So the Bob Mueller report is finally out. And the bottom line, no evidence of collusion between President Trump, his family, or his campaign with the Russian government. No evidence of collusion. That is the most important point. The Attorney General Bob Barr released a summary of the Mueller report over the weekend. It's about four to five pages long. And the bottom line here, all the things the media have been telling us for the, over the last two years, all the insistence that President Trump was colluding with Russia, that his campaign was colluding with Russia, that President Trump would be impeached, that President Trump would go to jail. The insistence they have had for the last two years that all these things would happen has now been proven to be untrue. So what will be the consequence for members of the media who have made these claims, who have essentially lied to the American people for so long? Let's give it a reality check. Reality Check with Ben Swan. Well, the Bob Mueller report is now finally out, and a summary of it that was released by Attorney General Bob Barr goes into detail about the extent of the investigation as well as the ultimate finding of the investigation, which ultimately says this, that President Trump, neither he nor his family nor his campaign ever colluded with the Russian government to steal the 2016 election, period, full stop. That is the point of this report. But to give you an idea of what went into this investigation, a couple of things here, that Bob Mueller employed 19 lawyers in this process. They were assisted by a team of some 40 FBI agents. They employed intelligence analysts, forensic accountants, and other professional staff. The special counsel issued more than 2,800 subpoenas executed nearly 500 search warrants, obtained more than 230 orders for communication records, issued almost 50 orders authorizing the use of PIN registers, and made 13 requests of foreign governments for evidence, and interviewed approximately 500 witnesses. You might say that there is a collective meltdown by so many members of the U.S. media, from CNN to MSNBC to the Washington Post to the New York Times. So many reporters frustrated that the promises they have made, the claims they've insisted upon, that President Trump and his campaign colluded with Russia in order to steal the 2016 election have now been proven to be 
untrue. That's a bombshell. The bombshell. This bombshell. Drop the bombshell. Bombshell accusation. Bombshell accusation. This is evidence of willingness to commit collusion. If this BuzzFeed News report is true, then we are likely on our way to possible impeachment proceedings. If this story is true, we must begin impeachment proceedings. Uh, this is suborning perjury. I think there's no question it's an impeachable offense. And at that point, we are in high crimes and misdemeanor, and we are in impeachment right, territory. Right. This president needs to be impeached. Impeachment is the remedy. I mean, the president can't... It's the it only is. remedy. The spirit of what Trump did is clearly treasonous. This is moving into perjury, false statements, uh, and even into potentially treason. There's outright treason. I mean, there is no question. So how bad has the media been in this process? To say that they have been irresponsible does not do justice to it whatsoever. Get this, over 530,000 articles were written about the Trump-Russia collusion. 530,000 plus articles written about it. Over 2,284 minutes have been devoted of network news time to the Russia probe. I think he's feeling the noose around his neck. The, the noose is tightening. Oh. And I think they're shocked that the noose is tightening. He feels the noose is tightening. The noose is tightening. The sound of hoofbeats of all those investigations catching up with Donald Trump must be loud in his ears. Hmm. He may be the first president uh, in quite some time to face the real prospect of jail time. People might go to jail. You're exactly right. For the that rest of their lives. I think they're all going to jail. Well, I think they're all going to end up together in prison, and maybe that's a good thing. Oh, my thing. God. He has no idea that right. he's going down. You're confident that at least some Trump associates will wind up in jail? If I was betting, I would say yes. Donald Trump Jr. gave us the dots. All we have to do is to connect them to see where this is going. Another point that's important to remember is that every single individual from Paul Manafort to George Papadopoulos to Roger Stone, who have been indicted by the special counsel's office, have not been indicted for colluding with the Russian government. We have pointed this out. Myself and other journalists have pointed it out, even as network journalists have claimed over and over, see another indictment. This is proof that, that there is collusion here. And we kept pointing out there's no proof it's collusion because none of the indictments that have ever come down in this case were attached to Russian collusion. Paul Manafort had to do with back taxes and hiding money from the U.S. government. George Papadopoulos had to do with lying to investigators in the FBI. Roger Stone, that he lied to Congress. Statements that were pro proven to be untrue, not Russian collusion. But over and over, the media told you a different story. He is going to be delivering what I think are going to be his indictments, the final indictments. I would not be surprised if there were a number of indictments that still were going to come down the pike. There are indictments in this president's future. The bottom line here is that we have seen so many claims made, so many promises made by our media. Where will the accountability be? Where will CNN fall on accountability for reporters and anchors and journalists who insisted that this was the case? Where will MSNBC fall in terms of accountability for Rachel Maddow, who has literally profited night after night after night telling a lie to the American people, of which she knew there was no evidence if she actually looked at the case, of which she knew there was no proof, and yet made insistence that it was absolutely true? Well, at least as far as this letter goes... From the Attorney General, Bill Barr tonight, Barr says he never exercised that power. He's notifying Congress formally there was never anything the special counsel sought to do that Bill Barr stopped Mueller from doing. And, if, and that's fascinating. Of course, everybody would like to hear that from Robert Mueller as well as from Bill Barr. But uh, at this point, it's only Bill Barr who is speaking on Mueller's behalf. Robert Mueller is still at this point publicly silent. Uh, as he has been from the very beginning. Although we'll have more on that in a moment. This is the problem with our media today. They are not journalists. They are not looking for information. They begin with the conclusion and they back build the facts to fit the narrative they want to believe. And in doing so, they mislead millions upon tens of millions of Americans. They mislead them about the truth. They mislead them about reality. They mislead them about the stories that affect so many people's lives. This is the reality of where journalism is today. And this is why that system has to be changed. That's Reality Check. Let's talk about it on social media if we still can. The 
evidence is pretty clear that there was collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. I think there's plenty of evidence of collusion or conspiracy in plain sight. We saw strong evidence of collusion. Well, we know there was collusion with people in the campaign. I think a mountain of evidence of collusion between the uh, campaign and the Russians. That will, would be very helpful to, to solve the problem. Okay. And I show this now in the next slide, and it's just takes me a few minutes, but I think it no, will be. I want to hear about this. Yeah. So, the first thing that here would you to see is all the time we were fear mongered. You know, we were killing our par our parents. Kids were killing their grandparents if you don't obey the rules, uh -huh. rules, 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 and it was always devastating what would happen if we don't follow the rules. And um, and so we had what we what we experienced is what we call pre-traumatic stress. Mm. There was actually a paper published by the uh, Gates Foundation, a research paper, showing that if you do fear mongering, you produce the same effects like if you had experienced the the, the traumatic event in real life. Wow! When you try, you know, when you experience a traumatic event, you develop what we call a post-traumatic stress syndrome, mm -hmm. and the, the hallmark of a post-traumatic stress syndrome, besides strong depression, is the shrinkage of the hippocampus. It's, it's a hallmark. You have a very, very small hippocampus when you suffer under suffer post-traumatic stress syndrome. Hmm. And what the paper showed by the Gates Foundation, if you do fear-mongering, the same thing will happen. He called it, they called it pre-traumatic stress syndrome. And they probably called it a feature. Yeah, <laughs> like the mission accomplished. And how it know? happens and how it works, I show here. How okay. you actually can do, how fear mongering leads to a shrinking hippocampus. Huh. And it works like this. The pre-traumatic uh, neurotoxic stress in response to fear narratives leads to the, to the yeah, um, leakage of molecules from the neurons into the extracellular space. And what's leaking here are molecules which shouldn't be outside of the neurons, and they are recognized by receptors, immune cell receptors, as a signal that the cells are damaged. No it's, ob it's obvious, you know, even okay. you have something outside of a cell which shouldn't be there, right. okay, the cell must be damaged. Okay. And uh, it's a danger receptor that recognizes it. And the leaked molecules, there are several different ones, uh, heat shock proteins, uh, um, H, uh, high mobility group molecules, which are used to to um, to um, control how the DNA is folded and so forth. Okay. So molecules we shouldn't be outside. Anyway, these molecules are outside. They are called a DAMS, danger associated molecular patterns, oh. and they are recognized by a receptor which is called TLR4. Is this receptor here is on an immune cell, which I show here of in the brain, which is called microglia. So there are stationary immune cells in the brain, which are essentially checking the brain that there is no yeah, toxin coming in, that there is no bacteria coming in, no virus coming in, that if there's a damage to the brain, activating the immune system to fight the damage or to fight the pathogens. Okay, so when TLR4 is activated by neurotoxic stress, it leads to a cascade of events that ends in the nucleus of the cell and it activates the transcription of pro-inflammatory cytokines. No kidding. And the pro-inflammatory cytokines that are produced like interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6, TNF alpha and many, many others, it's a long list, they all are known to be potent inactivators, blockers of neurogenesis in the hippocampus. So this is a cytokine storm in the brain. It's a cytokine storm. It's actually the same cytokines that are produced by the spike protein in the body Whoa. when you are not having Whoa. sufficient quantities of vitamin D in your but blood. But this can be induced only through fear. Not, fear only, not only. I come to another point where it is. No, no I, mean, I mean, this, like fear alone can induce this. Exactly. Now, of course, there are also foods and there are chemicals and toxins, but, yeah, absolutely. but fear alone, which is really tricking the person into poisoning their own brain. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. Yeah, 
This is happening, and when you you know now from the functions of the adult hippocampal neurogenesis, if you plot it, then as it in this situation, your psychological resilience drops. Uh huh. So you have reduced psychological resilience, and when you have reduced psychological resilience and the fear mongering continues, uh huh, this process becomes even worse. It's a cycle, a vicious cycle of neuroinflammation that right. you are entering now. And this is the major cause of chronic exhaustion, depression, and Alzheimer's. So I predicted in 2020, and I published a book on that, that we will get an increase, it's called the exhausted brain. It will be hopefully translated in English soon, but you will find everything in the indoctrinated brain in short, in short summary, so to speak. But I predicted in 2020, based on the things that are, fun, uh, that are done to us as a society, and in response to the fear mongering that we will get an increase in depression rates. Uh -huh. And actually there are papers out there, one was published in Lancet, which showed that compared to 2019, you remember highest rate of depression ever recorded to 2020, 20, we had an increase of threefold. In threefold? Threefold. So we had a dramatic increase in depression from a high level already. Uh -huh. And this is the cause. This is the cause, this, this vicious cycle was essentially exacerb exacerbated. It was like, yeah, massively uh, uh, activated and, 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 and pushed. But are you saying that you think this is from all of the fear that was associated with the, the pandemic? Not, not only the fear, I mean, you, you remember the slide I showed you with all the areas. Yeah, the uh, isolation the, and everything. The isolation took part, right. which dropped the production of neurogenesis. We didn't get enough physical exercise. We, the food changed dramatically. Yes. People didn't eat well anymore. Uh, then the purpose of life in many of many people uh, disintegrated, you know, of social course. interaction. Social you could interaction. only hug your family members through a piece of plastic. Remember that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people yeah, did that. So weird. No, and then, then of course the purpose in life. I mean, many people had to shut down their businesses. Yeah. And uh, there was no clear indication that there's hope that they can start again in any time soon. Right. So these all all these things together, sleep essentially quality dropped dramatically. When you, every evening you hear in the prime news uh, what's going on in the world, you uh -huh. know how bad it is, uh, even though it was never that bad as it was, uh, you know, told. You know. But, but let me ask you this: you you've talked about how the hippocampus can shrink quite rapidly with lack of uh, stimulation in the areas that you mentioned. What about the reverse? How quickly can you regrow the hippocampus? It actually quite uh, works quite well. I've yeah. seen a paper by uh, Bredesen, for example, he's a researcher on, on, on um, I don't know his first name, is it Alan? I'm not very good at names. Actually, names is not a hippocampal function. Is that right? Yeah, names okay. usually, if they don't come with a lot of emotion, then they, you don't learn them. Oh. And, uh, well, we could curse at the person you're thinking, maybe we could yeah. tie emotion to it or something. Yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, if you learn, learn to know somebody who you find either it's very like a, dangerous or very nice, then you most likely remember the name. But if it's more neutral, then, um, then there's not a We could add like a layer of Tourette's syndrome. Every time you want to remember somebody's name, you just yeah. tell them to go F themselves. And yeah. then you would have a or strong emotional event. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, something, and then yeah. that, th there's the answer. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe I should ask people when I meet them the first time to, to punch me in the face. Yeah, or like something. slap me yeah. or something. Yeah, then, then I'll remember you. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're yeah. kidding around. As, as long as not everybody's doing it, then it becomes confusing again. You know? That's true. Yeah, <laughs> you would have to. Have not to enough signal to noise new, ratio like, right there. Each one gets the or a slap to noise ratio. Yeah, we would call yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, many things happened. The fear mongering was part of that, and uh, of course, uh, was when had a susceptible community to begin with. You know, in 2019 with a low production rate and a shrinking hippocampus. And this was aggravated dramatically. And then this was 2020, but it was a situation 2020. And the only way out of this whole yeah, conundrum of this whole problem was, uh, yeah, get this injection. Yeah. yeah, that was your way out. Right. But it was, uh, how, I don't know how to say this in English well, but um, uh, you, it's like in Germany would say you, you, you um, essentially get rid of the devil and you get the Belzebub, you know, the, 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 other. the other rendition of the demon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But exactly. how would you say that in German? I, lo I love to hear other languages. Yeah, you, you essentially get, uh, yeah, 
No, how would you say it in German, really? So, yeah, now I have to switch to German. That's actually difficult <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, ja, den Teufel mit dem Belzebub austreiben heißt das. Oh, wow. Also, you, you, you essentially use the Belzebub to get rid of the devil. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, which essentially Or changes nothing. Sometimes in English we say out of the frying pan and into the fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you, you, you traded one emergency for another. Exactly, and that's exactly yeah. what's happening here now, and I show it now in the next, the next moment. Oh, okay. So what's happening now is you get only rid of this whole yeah, fear-mongering process. You get rid of the COVID pandemic if you get this injection. Right. Okay, so you get this injection, and here we have the spike mRNA injected in your, yeah, yeah. In your body, and you produce a lot of spike protein. The spike protein, as we know, has been modified. It has the urine cleavage site, and uh, of course it wasn't a virus uh, for whatever reason. <laughs> they left, they left it, gain you know, of function. Yeah, gain yeah. of function. And, and, and funnily, even though it's even from the immunological point of view, not really necessary, they left the purine cleavage site in the spike mRNA so that now this dangerous purine cleavage site, which allows the body to not only produce spike, but to cleave it and release the S1 subunit, uh -huh. uh, it was yeah left there. It was whatever. engineered into it. Yeah, but but they could have removed it. I yeah. mean, they always already they always told us, well, it was gain of function research, of course, and it's necessary as long as it's in the lab, it's not dangerous. Then this virus, you know, stepped out on purpose or by accident or whatever. But when they started with the injection program, they had it, had many decisions to make. They could have made the decision, for example, not to use a spike protein as an immunogen. They could have used something else. Sure. They could have used something else than mRNA. They could just produce the protein, nuclear capsid, for example. Inhalation, ready, you know, finished. But they used the spike protein, they used the mRNA, and they left the furine cleavage site intact, yes. which they shouldn't have. But they left it intact. And what happens now? The spike subunit, the S1 subunit, is able to enter the brain. It is able to cross the blood-brain barrier. And it was shown it does very efficiently. Yes. And now we have the spike protein S1 subunit in the brain. Okay. Oh boy. And there they are, the spike subunit is called a PAMP in accordance to the DAMPs. It's a pathogen associated molecular pattern. Actually, the TLR4, TLR4 here shown, re recognizes the S1 subunit mm -hmm. very efficiently. Actually, it is born with the ability to recognize. We are all born with the ability to recognize the S1 subunit. And also animals like mice, yeah, rodents are born with this ability. So in, in a sense, that means the same receptor in rodents and in humans recognize S1 subunit because coronaviruses were already around when we had the common ancestor of rodents and humans, like wow. 100 million years ago. Yeah. So they are there forever, and our uh, immune system doesn't have to adapt to it anymore. It has already learned hundreds of millions of years ago, maybe, maybe that the S1 subunit can, is dangerous and should be recognized. Uh -huh. And this danger uh, receptor, TLR4, recognizes the S1 subunit and activates the same program. Wow. And by activating this program, It shuts down neurogenesis uh -huh. again, so we are not sa uh, saved in 2021. We, yeah. are, we, we exchange one evil with the other. And since people's bodies continue to manufacture yeah. the spike protein with we, the furin cleavage site, like you said, then your body has been programmed to be a weapon against your own neurology. Absolutely. And what the term is, is not it, depression. Alzheimer's, of course, are also a cause of that about the real term nowadays used is spicopathy or brain fog. So right. what we, what we, when we talk about post-vac in the brain or, the, or long COVID after in uh, infection, uh -huh. it's nothing else than the S1 subunit activating TLR4. In addition to all the other effects, you know, myocarditis and things yeah, like sure, that. Yeah, sure, that's yeah. outside the brain. Right, Many other, outside the brain. Yeah, and of course, there are also different effects in the brain, like autoimmune diseases and yes. the increase of Alzheimer's uh, incidence and also, for example, But, Alzheimer's in 2021, we had an increase compared to 2018 in Germany 
of Alzheimer's, new cases of Alzheimer's by 31%. Wow. And usually the cutoff age that I learned in med school for Alzheimer's is 65. Besides the 31% increase, we had 100,000 new cases. That's one third of all the cases below the age of 65. Wow. That means we had a dramatic acceleration of Alzheimer's because Alzheimer's is not caused by age, it's caused by this disease process. So if this disease process is aggravated, we get an, an, an acceleration of the, of the Alzheimer's process, meaning people die, uh, get Alzheimer's younger and will die younger. But this is also why Big Pharma is celebrating all the future revenues from Alzheimer's drugs, sure. right? Sure, sure. So they, I mean, the same companies create the spike protein jabs mm. they know it's going to cause yeah. a whole generation of alzheimer's early on yeah. uh, alzheimer's and then they're going to profit from that too because they can they can keep people alive biologically it's, i would say it's a win-win situation isn't for it? them yeah it's a win-win situation so now, what's this compound that helps the natural compound the natural inhibitor of gsk3 beta you see gsk3 beta is the is activated by tla4 which then activates nf kappa b and so forth so this is a signal molecule it signals from the cell surface tla4 to the nucleus okay. gsk3 uh, gsk3 3. yeah it's actually that. gsk3 beta in the brain and gsk3 or gsk3 beta has a natural inhibitor the natural inhibitor as show here is lithium oh fascinating Lithium is the only substance at low molecular levels, like a one milligram, which is sufficient to actually stop the Alzheimer's progression. That's at one, least one, wait, one milligram per, per what? Per day. Oh, per day. It's, it's one milligram per day. You need only very, very low amounts. And, um, but it's only present at really trace amounts in most foods, though. Yeah, exactly. You need uh, certain foods that have actually a milligram. And uh, what I found is that fish but only fish from the ocean or, or mussels or whatever, uh -huh. fr fruit of the, of, the, of the ocean, so to speak. Huh. Has, um, because the lithium content in the ocean water is 100 times higher than in fresh water. Sure, well, I, or I would imagine, or even yeah. greater than that. And that's why, and it is also, and, and so when people were forced in the Stone Age to migrate to the ocean because of a, of a, a huge drought over 70,000 years, uh, caused by an ice age at the time, uh, they lived at the ocean. And this is actually the time when the brain of humans accelerated in its development. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe it's not only the omega-3 fatty acids from fish or the iodine that is, of course, also higher in, in the ocean. Uh, I, have, I suspect that the difference is between fish from inland and fish from the ocean is essentially the lithium content. That's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, because... Ocean water has all the elements in mm -hmm. it, but on the on the downside, there there are contaminants in the ocean, such as mercury. Yeah, right. Nowadays, it's not advisable to eat too much fish. That's why you should actually eat uh, lithium as a supplement. Can you can you get lithium as a supplement? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the funny thing now about lithium is it's a, it's a, a sad funny. <laughs> Uh, the sad funny about lithium is that it's an essential trace element. It was yes. shown to be an essential trace element in pretty much in every animal it was studied. For example, fruit flies, if you give them low-dose lithium, their life expectancy uh, is about 30% higher. Really? Uh, of course, if we block here at GSK3, we have an act not only, not only do we block the blockade of neurogenesis, we actually activate neurogenesis. Lithium was shown to activate neurogenesis. Lithium was also shown to activate the process of what we call autophagy or autophagy. Yes. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, autophagy. Autophagy. Yeah. Uh, and also micro autophagy. Uh -huh. It was actually proposed in a paper I just read that lithium might be able to even get rid of the by microphagy in the brain of spike protein. Wow. I mean, not That's lithium itself, but activating this process. Uh huh. Right. And in a. So and, and of course, in processed foods, sorry to interrupt, but in processed foods, there's virtually no lithium. No. Because almost, I mean, the minerals have been processed out of, you know, your typical cereals and breads and all these things. So when I published a book on Corona and Corona syndrome, where I tried to help people to prevent the disease 
course, the major part was vitamin D, you have to need to raise your level. But I also knew from the cytokine storm, which is activated by this process, that if you block this, you can block the cytokine storm by lithium. So I told people eat lithium, you know, and at the essential dose of one to two milligram. Uh -huh. And in 2020, 2022, a paper came out. People with severe COVID, severe enough that they had to go to the hospital, were, were essentially treated, standard therapy, but they were randomized into groups. And one group got lithium. Uh -huh. And a few days after they got lithium, the cytokine storm, cytokine, cytokine storm was down. It was done. No it kidding. It was over. Wow. The time the lithium group spent in the hospital was only half of the non-lithium group. The control group spent twice as much time. Huh. And uh, in the lithium group, nobody died. Nobody had to go to intensive care unit. Mm -hmm. And the, um, in the control group, I think about eight, seven or eight percent died. Well, see, that's fascinating because lithium, I mean, it's a, of course, it's a very, very light element. It's, it's well represented in the Earth's crust. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's used for batteries now, right? I mean, uh, yeah. lithium mining for, we need for, it for industrial our use is very widespread. And as you can see, we need it for our mental battery. We need it for our mental health as well. Mental now, aren't there a lot of like natural spring waters that are naturally higher in lithium? Yeah, yeah. If they are usually of volcanic uh, origin. Oh, interesting. Water, then they have a higher content usually. Uh huh. Um, which also means that it might have also contaminants, of sure. course. Sure, yeah. But um, the, the, the interesting story is, for example, 7-Up, you know, 7-Up got his name because 7 is uh, from the major isotope of, of lithium, is 7, right. the molecular mass. Right. That's where the 7 comes from. And the mood goes up when you drink it. Because, but it was the... 7-Up, oh, like uplifting. Uplifting, exactly. So there used to be lithium in 7-Up? Yeah, up? actually the, the source, uh, the, the fountain uh, name was lithia of 7-Up. Lith of oh. But they, they are allowed, it, um, I think they're not allowed to, to use this water anymore. Because lithium uh, is not good for for the technocratic narrative right. introduced in our brain. Of course, Coca Cola used to have cocaine in it. I wonder. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, like, like is is Seven Up the lithium drink? Is that the gateway drug to the cocaine in Coca Cola? <laughs> and is there like a fentanyl soda now? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, some things might not actually be that bad for us. You know? Who knows? <laughs> just, but, no, but, I can't help but joking around. But no, it's, it's, but it's 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 we have to choke because it's really serious here, and and right. choking helps a little bit to get about, around the issue. Yeah. But uh, there was a paper. Uh, actually, it was a press release by the University of Buffalo in, in North. Uh, New York, and there's also a guy like me who works in Alzheimer's and, and, and in Parkinson, and he also, like me, showed that uh, lithium is, would be helpful uh -huh. because these diseases, as we can see on this slide here, are caused by neuroinflammation and lithium uh -huh. can block it. So okay. does this also explain why lithium is sometimes prescribed to people for depression or yeah, mental yeah, health? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 it's, it's almost without, without side effects for that cause. Uh -huh. Because uh, it, as, as, if you give something which, which is essential, you shouldn't expect any side effects. Right. The side effects only come if you go in much higher doses, like bipolar disorders, where by accident they are identified that you can shut down the mood, uh, yeah, yeah, alterations by giving high, high doses. Let me let me mention your book one more time here, uh, and just show it on the camera. The Indoctrinated Brain is the book. I mean, Dr. Nels, this is just absolutely fascinating. Uh, and you can tell I could ask you questions for the next 10 hours, but I know you've already done many hours of interviews today. But the book is The Indoctrinated Brain. It's available at uh, Amazon and Barnes & Noble, booksellers everywhere. There's also an audiobook version available. This is from Skyhorse Publishing. And as you can tell, if you understand the information in this book, not only will it help help you navigate how you're being manipulated by global forces that want to, let's say, attack your hippocampus. Would that be mm -hmm. a... A fair way to say it. Yeah. And and then you can also uh, protect your neurology so that you can be more resilient. You can have better mental health, better joy, better purpose in life, better creativity, all these things that matter. Yeah, not only yourself, also your children, yes. your, your parents, your grandparents. Uh, it's it's for everybody around you. You need to know what, you, what helps you to protect yourself Absolutely. against this attack against our mental immune system. And this... It's, it's shocking to me how, how many layers of warfare there are against us right now. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you presented this whole new kind of warfare that's happening in the cognitive space. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a type of war that's not even recognized by most people. No, no, it's not. And it's, it, we see only these different wars. We see the war against a pandemic. And then we see a war against climate change. Then we see a war over borders, which might be global wars at eventually. At least the threat is in the air. And uh, so we see all these different wars. But for me, all these wars are, are actually essentially only one war, a war against the, mental, uh, against the brain. Wow. Because all the fears and all the narratives point in one direction to solve each of these problems you need a global government because not a single government in the world can solve the problem. That's the narrative. That's the narrative yeah. and that's implanted in our brain. And if you give me one more minute, I can show you actually why the, the most fundamental discovery I've made with my book. Oh, please and go for it. Yeah. This is shown here in this next slide. It summarizes essentially everything what we discussed and okay. brings one highlight which is very important to understand what I just said a few sentences, the last few sentences. Okay. So we have this attack on the mental immune system, which means we have a chronic lack of index neurons. We agree on that. The consequence is we have a loss, a, a natural, a loss of natural curiosity, which means we are not questioning anything that's happening around us. Right. And we, we know that people stopped questioning. They did. They stopped questioning. They just yeah. went along with everything. So yeah. and they accepted dangerous, nonsensical orders. Right. Uh, like lock down your children, wear a yeah. mask all the time. Or inject yeah. the stuff in your children right. if you are not endangered. You yeah, know? it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Then we have a weakened psychological resilience. We discussed it in, in length. But the consequence of that is you are easily controllable by anxiety. Yep. Then we have the low and twinkling self-esteem. The ego is shrinking yes, because your personality is shrinking, which means you have an increased ten tendency to collective narcissism. You, uh, you seek the group, right? no matter what nonsense the group is saying, but you, you feel yeah. more confident being with them together, right? which we can use actually against this, this development because we can say, well, we are the majority now. Then they will follow us immediately. Oh, well. Yeah, well, that's a... But we are not the majority. No. We, well, they, the others were never the majority with them. <laughs> that's, that's true. They, they, but it doesn't matter, but we will be the majority. This is the last chapter in my book. I show people who read it, how we can become the majority. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And then we have the reduced ability to think critically because we don't have the mental energy. Yeah. So we are trapped in stereotypical thinking and behavior. Right. So that's all leads to an acceptance of objectively harmful measures. And then we have all these brain damaging life changes. We allow the spiking. And the spiking is not the end. I mean, there are at least eight additional mRNA vaccines on the way. Oh, yes. Yeah, and we were told it's all necessary and we will accept them under these conditions. And we're told that the WHO will make you take those. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it we will, will be... accept it because, because all the deaths of this disease, you know, of, of COVID can only be prevented in the future in a similar situation if yeah. we give the con total control <laughs> to somebody else who... By, by for whatever reason told us not to take vitamin D. <laughs> by the way, your European neighbor, France, as you know, has now criminalized the speech that you have been giving here today. I know. It's criminal. Mm -hmm. In France, mm -hmm. you could go to jail up to three years for questioning the mRNA jabs. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's on the books right now. So, but that's, that's part of enforcing yeah. this whole system, isn't it? I, it's fortunate when I'm flying home, actually, we are not landing in France. We are actually jumping over them. Oh, yeah, they, they, yeah. Might, they might arrest you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had yeah. God. But what about in Germany? What, aren't you afraid they're going to pass a law like this in Germany at some point too? It's, everything is possible. Would you have to escape? What would you do in Germany? What would you do in the United States? Same thing. I would not. I would, I would, I would stand my ground. Yeah, exactly. That's my answer. <laughs> okay. And we can you, do nothing you, else. You, you, you can't silence me from speaking the truth. No, no, yeah. no, no. No. But that's but we have the First Amendment, and I don't believe that Germany has any well, free equivalent. speech and everything. We have also. I mean, uh, we have. We are not a such a, a small minority anymore. Yeah. I mean, the number of people who think and doing this to us is much smaller than the group of people who think True. who are against it. You are correct. Yeah. You are correct. And but between us is a majority still who is not willing to think, but we can make them think, we can help them to think.
that's, that's a really good point that it's actually just like we've been doing here today through your presentation and your book, you are reshaping the cognitive battlefield mm -hmm. by teaching people how the war is actually targeting them. I mean, the book that inspired me to write this book actually was the Schwab's book, COVID and the Great Reset. Oh, really? And, uh, because uh -huh. I realized why this is all happening. And uh -huh. I, I come to this actually in this slide. Okay, okay, go ahead. And uh, I'm so sorry, I, I keep interrupting you. <laughs> so, no, it's no problem But if you have enough time. But the point is, um, I had to write a counter narrative, yes. a humane counter narrative, something that is the alternative to what he is proposing. Uh -huh. And if this proposal is useful for people, it will have, it might prevail. Okay. So anyway, what we're having here is now a, cy a vicious cycle of indoctrination. But the indoctrination process is not stopped here. The, the idea that I had, and I come back to the beginning when I told you, on the, when I walked down these steps in, uh, in, in the Cross Island, in this, in this, in this, this house that we rented, um, the idea that I had is what happens actually if you have no index neurons like I show here and you still have to remember all these narratives, what will happen to your brain? And as I show here, what will happen is, and I mentioned it already, you have an overriding of the remaining index neurons with the fear narratives. That's the hack. That's the hack. Wow. You override it. You essentially <laughs> put in a new operating system, exactly. and erase the previous one. Our culture is pretty much erased. Our individuality will be erased. And the consequence of that is you will lose individuality. And the technocratic narrative, whatever it is, becomes a defining part of your personality. Do, do you think it's a coincidence then that right now Google's AI system is erasing all white people from history? <laughs> the memory of human history. Yeah. I mean, isn't that a metaphor for what you're talking about? It's, it's, it's identical. It happens in the outside world and happens in the inside world here in our brains. I mean, a generation from now, people could live in a world where they think that there were no white people in history. White people, yeah, really? I mean, whatever, quote, white people means, yeah, okay. um, you know, it, it's, it's a loosey-goosey definition. But, but, but censorship is a big thing, and the European Union just stated that the hugest pandemic we have is misinformation. What they actually mean is what we are talking here about. This is misinformation. They, they claim that, yeah. Yeah, they claim that. Right. And, and their biggest fear is that our information interferes with their idea to reprogram humans. Right. Exactly. So, Perfectly stated. So anyway, we have this loss of individuality and what this leads to is a culture damaging life change. Uh-huh. We accept the global technocratic dictatorship uh -huh. in such a situation and the installation, what I call an AI-controlled social operating system. And we all know people who worship that at the same time. Yeah. They will worship their jailers. It's their way out. Obedience to the system that's destroying them. Yeah, but it's their way out. And we have to make sure that they understand what's going on. And then, and I think we have still time, but the time is running out. We have to be quick. Wow. What if we could like secretly drop lithium into the water supply? Yeah, that's what, <laughs> one of the reasons I pushed lithium. I want to write a book about this. Uh, the title would might be Lithium for Life. Yeah. But, um, and I'm going to write this book because it has many, many other aspects besides this one here. It's worth writing a book about it. But I actually decided for myself, I'm the most important chapter maybe for the time being uh, is how lithium can interfere with this process. Uh -huh. So I put this on my Substack on my website and everybody can access it. Okay. So we can add all the What's your website again? Uh, it's michaelnels.com. Oh, okay. Michael-nels.com. Michael-nels in yeah, the HLS. You can find me also on Twitter and uh, on X, you know. Yeah. Just Nels, N-E-H-L-S-M-D. Yes. Nels-M-D. And of course I have a Substack, but you can find that by all these ways. And yeah, you find all the information on lithium. And it was very important for me to put this out because uh, doctors in Germany have to prescribe the essential dose. Ah. Because it's not allowed to put it in a, as a supplement out. Well, that's, gosh, we see that across the European Union, this war on supplements. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. A, it's totally crazy. Even on vitamin C. Yeah, but absolutely. Or vitamin D, they would, would love to. The New England Journal told us in 2020, on a, on a paper that was 
crazy. We could spend half an hour just talking about the craziness <laughs> of this paper. It's, it's totally absurd. But the result of this paper was that the editors of the journal uh, made uh, what they called an, um, a decisive verdict on vitamin D. And this is decisive verdict in diet on vitamin D. That's the New England Journal of Medicine saying that humans with deficit of vitamin D don't need vitamin D. That's crazy. Uh, you should stop taking vitamin D. Doctors should stop, should stop measuring vitamin D. And, wow. should, and people should stop wasting money investing in this. Supplement. That is so disastrously damaging to humanity. Yeah. So human, humankind has made an evolutionary step. We are uh, uh, <laughs> an essential <laughs> vitamin, which is the, the, the essentially uh, required to, to produce an essential hormone. It's not essential anymore. Well, but in order to survive, we need the yearly jab. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, we live in a world of imaginary biology. I, I wouldn't be surprised soon. The New England Journal of Medicine says men can have babies. Yeah, it's maybe even possible. Arnold Schwarzenegger showed it, didn't he? I, I probably. Yeah, I did. But, that was a movie. But, he showed it. But it it's, it's it's imaginary biology that they're pushing, and then they accuse us of having misinformation. I mean, how crazy is that? Okay, a couple other things before we wrap this up. And by the way, I'm very honored that you stopped by here because, I mean, you traveled all the way from Germany to come to the States, and you've been on several different shows, and, and um, uh, I'm really honored that you would come to our studio and, and share this time with us. I know you're probably exhausted. You've done a lot today already. But uh, I just want to mention... When you're talking about lithium, it reminds me of orthosilicic acid mm -hmm. uh, or OSA, which helps the body. Oh, and th this is a substance that's naturally found in uh, Fiji mm -hmm. water, by the way. Mm -hmm. But you can also get orthosilicic acid, I, I believe, as a supplement. But it binds with aluminum mm -hmm. in the blood, mm -hmm. forming a much larger uh, molecular compound, uh, aluminosilicates, I believe. Mm -hmm that then the kidneys can eliminate and it reduces aluminum concentration in the blood. Mm -hmm. I had thought that aluminum, high aluminum concentrations were also associated with neuro Absolutely. inflammation. It, it does. Okay. It does. This is why, for example, all the injections kids, children become when they are in the first year, second year, third year, and even a, to get permission to go to school, they had to get certain jabs. Uh -huh. All these um, vaccines contain uh, certain quantities of aluminum. As adjuvants. Yeah, this is not good. Yes. It's not good. Um, is it possible then that the, the, the aluminum could provoke even more degeneration of neurology in the absence of, of lithium or vitamin D? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 they are... They are essentially effects which uh, conda each other. Uh -huh. so aluminum activates you know, the, the inflammation, yes. lithium blocks it. Yes. So uh, without lithium and only aluminum, aluminum it's, 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 it's really worse than uh, having both. Um, right. Actually, I use alpha liponic acid to get rid of the uh, uh, aluminum. Was that right? Yeah. Alpha, alpha lipoic acid, ALA. Yeah. It's used also if you have an accident, for example, with mercury or something yeah. in the industry, then you get uh, large quantities of alpha liponic acid. No kidding. And it's a natural compound actually produced by the body, but you can increase it. Yes. And uh, I think it's the most natural way to get rid of heavy metals and also of aluminum. Well, that's really interesting. Mm. Okay. Huh. I'll, I'll have to check that out because I'm, I'm always interested in uh, detox from uh, yeah. toxic elements. Actually, if you read my paper, the... The um, Unified Theory of Alzheimer's Disease, it's part of the program. Oh, I would love to read that paper. Uh, can you send us that link, perhaps? Uh, no problem. my producer? No, no problem at okay, all. Okay, I'd like to cover that. Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. But you find also on my website all articles on Alzheimer's, and you will find prominently oh. my papers. Oh, okay. Me. Well, then that's, that's what we'll do. Okay. Um, and uh, is it okay? I'd like to ask your permission. Can... Uh, can the AI language model system that we are training, can I train it on your papers? It would, it would influence the model. It wouldn't copy your papers. No, I have no problem with that. Okay. I would love to do that because we have uh, many other scientists and researchers like uh, Dr. Judy Mikovits. Her books are going, uh, they're, they're going to be used to train our model. Mm -hmm. And um, our model will have a lot of knowledge about uh, 
nutrition and elements and detoxification and so on. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, can, can add use your papers my lithium to, article and whatever I have. I would love to. Yeah. And that way, when people queried about lithium, you know, the answers would tend to be reflected, would tend to reflect some of your work. That would be nice because, uh, to be honest, uh, chat GPT or whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was told by my, my son-in-law, who is a medical doctor, and um, he said he's, the, he's using it for his research. Oh. And so I said, well, uh, send me a link. And I did, got his link and I put all the keywords I had in my mind working on lithium yeah. and, and this process here that I just described. And I hope that something comes out because <laughs> the world knowledge is there. I can tell you there was nothing I was of any value that I could, that I could use. No, no, no. The, all, all the the chat GPT systems or the AI systems produced by those corporations, they follow the same narrative control as their platforms. Okay, that makes sense. We are actually producing the first model rooted in natural medicine and, and nutrition. Okay, perfect. Then I'm more than happy that you use my article. Okay. Yeah, we're, we've spent like $600,000 on this project so far. Okay. And it's, it's going to be, uh, keep me post going to be a resource, uh, for research that people can use. Perfect. Yeah. So if I get access to it, that would be very nice. Uh, you'll be able to download it for free and, and run it on your own local computer. Maybe, maybe not the laptop. You need I, 16 gigs of RAM. I have a bigger one at home. Yeah. You can run on the bigger one. Yeah. So, Great. okay. Sure. Well, it's nice. we're all doing our part to help spread knowledge and information. No, to that's power humanity. I mean, my book would be worthless without people like you, to be honest. But we're, we, We're on Team Humanity together. Yeah, absolutely. My show would be worthless without people like you. So <laughs> no one wants to just sit here and watch me solve the Rubik's cube or whatever. It's boring. <laughs> no, It's you hands, here. Yeah, Thank you absolutely. Very much. Thank you, Dr. Nels. It was a pleasure. A pleasure to have you here today. It was a pleasure on my side. All right. Well, folks, there you go. Uh, Dr. Michael Nels. His website is michael-nels n e h l s dot com, and of course, his book is called The Indoctrinated Brain, and it's available everywhere right now definitely check this out and uh i interviewed dr nels a few months back you can also check out that interview on brighton.com